Fly me to the moon Let me play among the stars The wonders of space have the power to intrigue both young and old. There it goes. Tony Swain doesn't have a background in science. I know some of the constellations in the sky. But the retired bread salesman's interests have always gravitated towards the moon. It'd be great to be able to stand on the moon and look down at the Earth. Unfortunately, a trip to Sacramento's powerhouse museum is probably as close as Tony will get to the moon. My daughter got married last year. But Tony does have a plan to possibly get his kids there one day. I bought this property to present to them afterwards. I said, hey, look, I bought you an acre of land on the moon. You own a spot on the moon? I do. How did you buy this property? Well, like I said, I first met Dennis when I was playing golf, and um, he was telling me about his, his lunar empathy. It may be hard to believe, but there really is a guy selling moon property on the golf course. This is a wonderful golf course. It's challenging. His name is Dennis Hope. I sell property on the moon, Mars, Venus, Io, and Mercury. According to Siri, Dennis is the real deal. Siri, who owns the moon? Here's what I found on the web. The owner of the moon is Dennis Hope. He pioneered lunar real estate and sold over 7 million properties and counting. The moon market is so good that Dennis can afford to spend most of his days right here at the golf course in Rio Vista. This is my only source of income and has been for the last 23 years. Lunar Embassy is his company and he sells property on the moon in 197 different countries. How much is your total property worth? $763 trillion. Dennis has been interviewed more than 4,000 times on TV shows and in magazines, and he even sold property to some very well-known people. Uh, George Lucas, Ron Howard, Tom Hanks, Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman, three former presidents of the United States, and then uh, Trump already had his in 2003. The out-of-the-world business is no joke, but Dennis says the way he got into the business is kind of laughable. I was divorced, unemployed, Almost out of money. In the 1980s, Dennis was a struggling actor. He must be a Harvard man. When Hollywood couldn't pay the bills, Dennis decided to sell property. The only thing, he didn't own any. So, as soon as I had that thought, I saw the moon and thought, there's a lot of property. Dennis knew he couldn't just sell moon property unless he owned moon property. So, he found a loophole. It was the Outer Space Treaty of 1967. The loophole lies in the United Nations 1967 Space Treaty, which says no nation can take ownership of the moon. Well, Dennis figured that since he wasn't a nation, he could personally claim the moon. Well, I wanted to inform, inform, not ask permission, inform the United Nations that I was doing this. So I did. What'd they do? They didn't respond. They've never responded. It may be a loophole, but not everyone agrees with Dennis's logic. I would be happy to be named Galactic Counselor uh, if, if he desires. UC Davis doesn't have an interstellar law professor, but they do have this guy. Hi, I'm Anupam Chandler, professor of technology law at UC Davis. Professor Chandler says staking a claim is nothing new, but he has some doubts about Dennis's claim. Is it illegal what this guy's doing? No, I don't think it's illegal. Um, I just think that he's asserting a right they doesn't have. Now, in Dennis's defense, he did go to great lengths to notify government leaders and even got a copyright for his business. But Chandler says that may not be enough. This person here has claimed authority, but he's asked the wrong people. Well, they're entitled to their opinion. I don't necessarily think it's true. Dennis says he constantly deals with skeptics, but he does continue to do what he can to protect the rights of the 7 million lunar landowners. This is the, uh, my identification for being president of the galactic government. Yes, you heard that right. Dennis is also starting his own government, and he says for good reason. Um, we do know that there are 27 companies on planet Earth right now exercising their right to create rockets that will take them to the moon and allow them to mine helium-3. The first lunar settlers will also be miners. Helium-3 is a rare element that could be used to create fusion energy and produce clean electricity for the world. The moon is loaded with the stuff. And get this, China is actually actively sending up lunar modules to try and mine the helium-3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your investment now may pay off uh, for your Future generations. Future generations. There you go. Uh, Tony may not be able to visit his property on the moon, but someday he believes the market could change and his $24 investment could be worth its weight in 
Helium 3. And they're going to probably put an airport there. You think so? I think so. Uh, uh, Down well, the road. Hey. Reporting on the market of the moon, John Bartell, ABC 10 News.